Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. If there is one thing I certainly know about this channel's subscriber base is that you lot seem to enjoy it when I cover aspects of fighting game history. While in many cases I provide deep dive analyses of entire fighting games, today we are going to do something different and take a depthy look at just one small element of a particular excellent game. Street Fighter Alpha 2 is a title that is beloved by many that massively built on what could be found in Street Fighter Alpha before it. The game features a larger character roster, new attacks and awesome game changing mechanics. Most relevant to today though was that this game has awesome new stages. These new levels not only helped establish an identity for this entry but one stage in particular featured the most Capcom fan service I have ever seen on a single screen. Ken's stage is a true celebration of Capcom's history, with an insane 17 different characters from previous Capcom released titles turning up to make appearances in the background. So in this content we are going to briefly cover who each of these 17 cameos are, so you can further appreciate how truly magical this stage is. This is a look at Ken's stage from Street Fighter Alpha 2, Capcom's ultimate fan pleaser moment. Yeah. In 1995, Street Fighter Alpha would mark the first game in history that would cross characters over from different but closely related Capcom franchises, with Final Fight characters being trickled out and added to the Street Fighter roster as the Alpha series progressed. While we would have to wait for a true Capcom crossover fighter, with the debut of the Capcom vs series at a later date, we did have a mass crossover as early as February 1996, Vinken's stage in Alpha 2 which as discussed is chock full of Capcom favourites. So let's begin discussing each of these onlookers. Starting from the far left of the stage we have none other than Lord Raptor, a charismatic young Australian rock star who killed himself and 100 of his fans via ritualistic sacrifice. The fighter who originally debuted in the first Darkstalkers game is a musician who was revived by Emperor Ozum, who took note of his actions turning him into a supernatural being. Although it is later revealed that all of this was part of Lord Raptor's plan to destroy Ozum and take his spot as Emperor. The next two cameos also originate from the Darkstalkers games, Huisinko along with her sister Mai Ling. The Chinese siblings who first appeared in Night Warriors Darkstalkers Revenge were raised to be Senjutsu Shis as they were taught of its arts by their beloved master. Sadly on one ceremonial night their village was attacked and their master was killed. After this sad murder took place, their mother gave her life to protect them, leading to their mother's soul being trapped in darkness. To release her mother, Wasinko uses a special technique that results in her being transformed into a Chinese hopping vampire, leading to Myling, her sister becoming a wall to ensure Wasinko doesn't lose control of her darker half that has been building inside her. The two set off for revenge, but that does not mean that they do not find time to watch Ken have a punch up. The two characters featured here are the two unknown soldiers from the video game Forgotten Worlds, a shoot 'em up published by Capcom back in 1988. The coin up game is set in the 29th century, after an evil god has already destroyed Earth. Two nameless super soldiers were created to defeat the god known as Bios and the eight evil demigods who serve him. The two soldiers from this cooperative affair somehow managed to time travel back to planet Earth's past to witness some Street Fighter action today. Back to the world of Darkstalkers, we have the most iconic Darkstalker of them all, that damn succubus from Scotland known as Morrigan, the anti-hero and main protagonist of the Darkstalkers franchise. The Ryu of Darkstalkers is well known for being beautiful, sexy, confident, conceited and playful, however Morrigan is also said to be equally as friendly and approachable as she is other things, which makes it not that surprising really that she would attend a gathering like that of which is featured here. Morrigan will do whatever it takes to satisfy her hunger. Also watching the skirmish we have two professional wrestlers from Capcom Slam Master games. The first of these is Biff Slamkovich, a Russian fighter who trained under the tutelage of Mike Hagar of Final Fight fame. Biff is a wrestler who hates showmanship and thinks that other wrestlers should focus on the grappling itself. Joining him we have the founder and owner of the Capcom Wrestling Association, undisputed champion Victor Ortega, a man who mysteriously disappeared from the ring when there was no one left strong enough to give him a decent challenge. 
the character resurfaces at the end of Saturday Night Slam Masters, then finally becomes an opponent at the end of Ring of Destruction Slam Masters 2. Also watching the action we have Eliza, the wife slash girlfriend of Ken depending on the part of the timeline we are at. She marries Ken following the events of Street Fighter 2, but the story in the Alpha series on the other hand is set before then. At the end of the first Street Fighter Alpha game, Ken meets Eliza for the first time. Impressed with his fighting skills, the pair end up falling in love, leading to her presence here in the second Alpha game. The next two characters present are also from the same game, both of which surface as playable fighters for the first time within Captain Commando, a game set in the distant future of Metro City, many years after Mike Hagar's reign as mayor. This four player beat em up sees crime fighter Captain Commando and his commando team protect the Metro City from a space crime syndicate. So I guess his presence in Street Fighter Alpha 2 means time travel must exist in the futuristic world of 2026 as well. Ginzu the Ninja is watching the fight unfold as well, a fellow member of the commando team. The gentleman is literally just a Shoryuken for a ninja assassin, so not much else to add here other than he is a fighter from a different time period as well. Moving along we have Michelle Hart from the 1986 Capcom fantasy themed shoot 'em up game known as Legendary Wings. The coin up game lets players take control of a young soldier equipped with magical wings who must save the world from a malfunctioning supercomputer. There are two different soldiers players can control in this game and the female one is Michelle Hart. Her appearance in Alpha 2 certainly is a fairly surprising one. We then have a more iconic character making a cameo, Strider, who, like Captain Commando, would go on to become a big part of Capcom crossover games down the line. Strider would debut in the arcade in 1989, but would surprisingly debut in a Japanese manga one year earlier, back in 1988. The character who featured in a game that heavily influenced Ninja Gaiden, Devil May Cry and God of War makes his first ever appearance within a fighting game here. History was literally made. Another surprising appearance here is from Lin Kurosawa from Capcom's Alien vs Predator arcade game. While Alien vs Predator itself is not a Capcom owned license, the Lin character was invented by Capcom themselves for the game. This Japanese martial artist gets involved in combating a xenomorph infestation in San Gerard, California as the events of Capcom's Alien vs Predator unfold. She appears on this stage and is said to have later inspired the creation of Ibuki for Street Fighter 3, so her influence did not quite end here either. Back to the world of Darkstalkers we then have Felicia. This strange Catwoman wishes there to be a way for peaceful coexistence between Darkstalkers and humans alike. For that, she pursues her dreams of becoming a famous musical star to serve as a bridge between the two races. In the events of Vampire Saviour, she wondered about how she could make others happy. In her ending, she constructs an orphanage named the Felicity House, but despite such a mindset, this never stopped her venturing out to watch one human hit another in the face. Pure surfaces from the 1992 Japanese exclusive known as Adventure Quiz Capcom World 2 a Capcom themed quiz game programmed for the Capcom System 1 board. The game takes place in the fictional world known as the Capcom Kingdom, which could explain how all these characters appear alongside one another in Alpha 2 in the first place. As according to Adventure Quiz, they all live in the same world. Pure is one of the playable characters in the game, a young mage whose parents are people from the skies. She will eventually work as a goddess to spread love and courage throughout humanity. Finally, the most intriguing of all of these background characters is the servant standing on the far right, who is said to be a gentleman known as Kenzu Sujimoto, a character who has never appeared in any Capcom games prior or after. Technically, I guess this character is all of the other characters' gods, as Sujimoto was the Japanese businessman who founded Capcom to begin with. Amusingly, while this was his first appearance in an actual Capcom game, this did not stop him from making a cameo in the Street Fighter live action movie prior. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, a huge insane amount of Capcom fan service and company history squeezed into just one simple stage backdrop within Street Fighter Alpha 2. Future games such as the Capcom vs series would later illustrate how keen in the 90s Capcom were to celebrate their characters pasts, but prior to all of this as shown today, a huge lineup of Capcom characters appeared alongside one another within this Capcom fighter as well. Do you know any moments within fighting games that are a nod to the past as strong as this one? 
let me know in the comment section down below, as gaming history has many great moments that deserve further spotlighting. If you enjoyed today's content, why not subscribe to this channel and check out my fighting game backlog. I have taken a deep dive look at countless fighting games in the past, and all these videos can be accessed by simply clicking the playlist on the pinned comment attached to this very video. These videos are produced with help from those who back my channel on Patreon, allowing myself to work on YouTube full time. With that said, massive thank yous go out to Sebastian Vélez, Carl Johnson, A Murder of Crows, Heo Paulo Lopez, Joseph Rasnick, Ben Haradine, Corey Imar Sr., Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Rowan Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Cambo Rambo 82, Azrael Rorakai, Keith Ferguson, Joaquin Morella, Prince Knight, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Durant, Angel Light 85, Alephia Swanson, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Glennie Glenn, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Aaron McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sanghee, Ben Dover, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlaming Renee, Marvin Aaron Liga, Chris Cool, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Juice Stewart, James McDonald, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bale, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick 67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wrights in Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazanski, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who continues to back the channel. You really help me do what I do. Thank you.